We have put together a panel of experts who can answer your questions, and we're going to meet them right now. So expert number one, please come in and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Jerry. I'm from the future. I exist only within the metaverse at this point, and uh, I've come to just dispense uh, wisdom from that. Wow, Jerry, wow. Jerry. You are from the metaverse. Oh, well, I, I've i never met anyone from the metaverse. You're my first metaversian. I've never actually met anybody from the metaverse either, but uh, we all just, you know, meet within the metaverse. Uh, it's better that way, honestly, because uh, germs. Ah, yeah. Oh, germs. Yeah. You're, you're telling me there's more germs in the in the in the future? Oh, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, thank you, Jerry. We're going to move on to expert number two. Please come in and introduce yourself. I am uh, Professor Smith, and I am a uh, expert on medieval studies. I am an expert on all things medieval. Medieval. Oh, I was just talking about medieval. Well, thank you. Thank I specialize you. in the Turner. Tur the turnip in medieval times yes ah okay all right that that's cool all right thanks professor smith and expert number three please come in and introduce yourself hello hello i'm lars youngblood yes and uh you know i'm 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 I have many degrees and many, many different things, but of course I also have an enduring love of poopetry. And uh, <laughs> here is here's my poopet, Sally. And uh, so, you know, about a year ago, I had a bombing accident <laughs> and my thumb is cut off. And so, but nothing can stop my love of poopetry. <laughs> Isn't that right, Sally? <laughs> I, I cannot, she cannot move her mouth because I don't have a thumb. <laughs> you know, you, Sally. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, Lars, Lars and Sally. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it was very realistic. Wonderful. Okay, so great. So uh, we have our experts and now we need to get to our first question. So let's see, um, just looking, uh, okay, yes. This is a good one. How does a TV work? That is the first question. So, uh, Jerry, you're you're from the future. You should probably know this. So, so how does a TV work? That's simple. Everybody knows how a TV works. Um, yeah, yeah. You uh, you take the USB dongle, you plug it into the back of your head, and then it projects the images right in front of your eyes. Uh, <laughs> any three year old can operate a TV these days. I mean, come on. Let's uh, let's just get with the picture. Get it? Because a picture. That was a pun. Picture, yes. So they still have puns in the future. Oh, boy. unfortunately, yes. Uh, uh, scientists have tried to kill those, and they have been unsuccessful, like the super germs. So, <laughs> but they still have the super germs. All right. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. All right. And Professor Smith, how does a TV work? Well, it works very much in the way you find that they work. Obviously, by you watch them and things appear upon them. Of course, in middle medieval times, people used to carve, this will be of interest to you, sir, um, carve puppets out of turnips. And, they, and, and one of the reasons we call it television is it was originally tur turnip vision. And we could view the turnip puppets and they used to make hair out of the greens. It was a lovely, lovely thing, lovely, lovely. Oh, so turnip vision. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Professor. And finally, Lars, uh, how does a TV work? Well, I think I'll turn this question over to Sally. You'll spend enough time watching TV, don't you? How does a TV work, Sally? <laughs> I don't, I can't understand you, Sally. You're not making sense to me. Here, write it down. Here, write, write, she'll write it. Here, write it down, Sally. I can't, Sally. 
<laughs> She's in one of her moods. Oh, I certainly seems that way. All right, Lars. Well, thanks very much. So this time I'm going to ask Mike to pick a question from the chat. Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I I also want to know who first discovered caviar. Caviar. Oh, wonderful. So I think this is a historical question, so we should start with Professor Smith first. So, Professor Smith, who first discovered caviar? Well, as you know, I'm an expert on medieval times, and actually the, the caviar was discovered in early evil times. Yes. <laughs> it was discovered by a fisherman who went fishing and caught a fish. Yes, he did. It was lovely. And um, he was just throwing the inside parts away, the way people do. And he noticed his cat was eating the little roe, as they are called. And he decided to have some himself. And the, fish's na the fisherman's name was Cav E R, Calvin E R, and it became caviar by that. Yes. Wow, what a revelation. Thank you, Professor. And and Lars, same question. Uh, who first invented caviar? Who first discovered caviar? Well, caviar, as you know, is sort of a desperation food. Once uh, lobster was seen as prisoner food in, in colonial times, just so caviar was seen as what a desperate guy pulled out of the fish when he couldn't get, you know, the good fillets. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Sally? No one can understand you, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> well, it certainly sounds like Sally might be a fan of caviar, so she might have a, a, a different opinion. Terribly sad. Terribly that poor All Sally. Right. And, and Jerry, Jerry, you have uh, access to the metaverse, so I'm sure you have the definitive answer to this. So who first discovered caviar? Well, that's simple. Um, of course, the, the entire base of history is on the metaverse. So uh, let me just pull up. There we go. I've pulled up the Wikipedia page. That still exists in the future, of course. Um, and everybody edits it, so it's all absolutely 100% accurate. Uh, so I can see here caviar was first discovered in the first Pokemon War um, when a magic harp was cut open by a lol cat. I believe it was Grumpy Cat, in fact. And uh, Grumpy Cat found those eggs inside, tried them, uh, and then posted online about it. People thought those were uh, cool, and so they've been harvested ever since. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, modern caviar is mostly Soylent Green flavored. Good to know. Wow. Uh, history certainly sounds interesting in the future. Oh. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. And so, uh, Mike, let's get another question from the chat. Um, I think I want to know, as well as Barry Kuda does, how should Wiley, a Wiley Coyote catch the Roadrunner? How oh. might that happen? Yeah, this is a this is an age old question. So this time we'll start with Lars and Sally. So do you have any advice to Wiley Coyote how he can catch the Roadrunner? One thing I would say, both from the cartoons and my own experiences, is that the products of the Acme Company are inferior, and they <laughs> rarely give what is delivered. And and so I would start by not trust. Wait, Sally has something. She wants to say something. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, it looks like she's dead. traveling in and out. What? I can't see what's written there. Oh, help me. Oh. Why would she need any help? That's crazy. That's that crazy, that, Sally. That, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's, I think that's good advice for, for Wiley Coyote. All right, uh, Jerry, um, what advice would you give Wiley Coyote about catching the Roadrunner? Well, of course, the, uh, the, the tales of Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner are still popular in my day. Uh, nowadays, the Roadrunner is, in fact, an NFT worth 3.5 billion Lexabucks. Um, well out of my uh, price range. But uh, back prior to the NFT days, I would imagine um, Wiley Coyote could probably catch an actual roadrunner 
um, which I believe after World War VII, Roadrunners became irradiated in the size of a house. Um, coyotes, of course, gained Stinger missiles at that point. So I would suggest coming in from the east, that is the Roadrunner's blind side because its seven eyes are on the uh, left side and all the pseudopods are on the right. So that would probably be the best uh, angle for uh, getting that attack vector you need to take one down. Good advice and very detailed advice as well. Thank you, Jerry. And finally, Professor Smith, uh, what advice do you have for Wile E. Coyote to catch the Roadrunner? Well, unfortunately, uh, this is a modern Roadrunner we're speaking of. I only know that uh, the Wile E. Coyotes of the medieval times uh, did not have really any trouble catching the Roadrunner because they were not yet evolved to the high-speed creatures they are now. In fact, we used to call them, we called them slow runners. Yes, oh. and they suffered, and this is very interesting because it's coming down through history to us. They suffered from acnes, which is where the name of the acne company finally came from when the Roadrunner finally started to speed up. You see, so the Roadrunner actually owns the acne company, and that's why none of it ever works. I'm not really supposed to have told you that. But. Oh, it all makes sense now. It falls into place. Thank you, history. And thank you to our panel of experts. Let's have a big round of applause for them. Acne Company.